And that's how the theme song goes. Hey, welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. And if you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscolony.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. <laughs> it's a good, guys, again, classic Wednesday afternoon. I just got done recording the application podcast. If you don't know what that is, it's a podcast where I sit down and I talk to myself for 30 minutes. Sounds so familiar, right? But I'm begging WABE or Atlanta's NPR news station for a job to be their audio slash podcast producer. I said, you know, I'm just now realizing I seem to be forgetting to mention that every single episode. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, I do want the job and everything, but it's pretty much it has just gone off the rails. I'm not going to talk about it here because that's too much talking about that stuff. Go on over to the subscribe to the application. Listen to the podcast. I swear it's good. I, it's really, it's better than this one because <laughs> this one <laughs> definitely tries too hard. I'm adjusting the mic so much and you can hear every second of it. Go check out the application on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your freaking podcast. And now on to the show. So I've been doing both of these shows. <laughs> He's saying, just jumping right back on the train. I've been doing both of these shows. It's real fun. Uh, I got something big coming up next week. I'll talk about it in a second, but first I want to talk about shows I was supposed to be watching, <laughs> which was manifest in the first. <laughs> it sounds like I'm doing this on purpose. It sounds like I'm doing, uh, 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 what's it called? I'm sorry. I'm trying to type in, and do this at the same time. It sounds like I'm doing this on purpose. It's, it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm being Jimmy Kimmel's. I'm, I'm doing I'm Matt Damoning this, uh, the, the first and uh, the other one, uh, Manifest. But God bless America, I have just been caught up not watching those shows. <laughs> I'm watching other things that I think are worth my time. No offense to those shows. Not that I'm saying like they're not worth my time, but they definitely are worth my They're worth my time. I just can't watch them right now. I can hear the children outside. This microphone is very strong. Also, these windows and walls are very, very thin. Um, but yeah, it sucks because, uh, you know, recently... I, so I was on my Hulu account. I use, I use Hulu pretty much every day. It's, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I've like Hulu and Netflix. I have subscribed to them from day one. When Hulu was a, when Hulu was around in like 2007, 2008, I was on there. Like I was one of the first people on there, which is crazy for a child of my age to be watching free. It was free then, uh, free and ad supported watching like latest ABC shows on that or latest Fox shows. It's, it was so crazy. Uh, and Netflix, like I was subscribing to the DVD service, like and when I was in middle school, like that was like I had that in Blockbuster, which is really crazy. In elementary school, I, I believe, because they were they, they've been around since the early two thousands, like the early like late nineties or two thousands. So anyway, <clears throat> I uh, cleared my mouth off mic, which is, cleared my mouth off mic. <laughs> There's a bunch of food on it, and I cleared it off. I wiped it off. So anyway, I've been uh, so back to my Hulu account. Uh, a couple of weeks ago for the Emmys, I got Hulu with live TV for the week to watch the Emmys live. It's a great service. Makes me realize that there's still too much stuff on TV. <laughs> just during the day. Just crazy amount of things. Uh, I don't know why, but Friday night, uh, Hulu with live TV. So that I had the trial. Trial's done. I stopped having live TV. I don't know why. Friday night, live TV came back for me from like from like Friday to this past Tuesday. And I just had live TV for the for the weekend, and it was great because I got to watch a whole bunch of things. I got to watch football on Sunday; it was wonderful. And uh, there were nar- there's nary a hiccup, but you know, Comcast is the worst internet provider. Google, this is where I live. Google Fiber is is here. It's in my it's it's I, I can get it. Uh, I can see the Google Fiber store from where I live. I shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> I can see it from where I live, and I really want Google Fiber, but I don't think my roommates would go for it. Because I don't think they know what fiber is, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so let's get on moving on to the shows that I want to talk about. So that all that to say, I will watch Manifesting in the first at some point. Uh, anyway, so if I feel bad is a show that is on a NBC and it is from I think I already talked about this show, but I now I've been watching this show uh, more and more. Uh, it's a wonderful show. Uh, de- definitely, like I said, get past the pilot. 
but I feel bad is I think most be, uh, it's bestly most bestly is accompanied with single parents in such a good way that I've watched I watched both of them in the same way and I'm starting to realize that those are the two shows I wasn't supposed to be talking about but I think they're both coupled together watch them in the best way uh, but on the other hand <laughs> there these are the two shows I was supposed to be talking about the, uh, these there's a it's a very strange thing when uh, you watch a show and there's an actor in there that you really, really like, but the show is just not good. And for these next two shows, I hate to say it, I love the cast so much, so much. I love every single person in both of these casts. But God bless America, are these shows bad? I'm not gonna. St- I'm gonna stop banging my laptop. <laughs> oh, Adobe updated all of its programs. It does it twice a year on a, in April and August. In, uh, in April. In October, it updates them, and so far, you know, fingers crossed. Knock on wood. I knocked my toes on wood right now. I'm doing it right now. Uh, it's it's uh, Adobe Audition is great. Premiere is great. <laughs> so far, so far, no crashes, nothing. We'll see what happens. I gotta keep monitoring these levels, but so uh, all I had to say is CBS. I know they're the highest rated in the nation, <laughs> in the world, <laughs> in the world for broadcast television, but. God almighty, they have the worst shows. And it really, really sucks to see these amazing people on these shows. And and basically, I mean, yeah, you get it. The, the good thing about a multicam is it's a nine to five job. You go in there, you rehearse, uh, you shoot on Fridays, you, you rehearse all week, you shoot Fridays, and that's the episode. And it's quick in succession. It's like, like if 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 there's an easier job, it would be uh, working for a soap opera. It'd be like soap operas, multicam, single single cams, and then genre uh, dramas. <laughs> yeah, genres genres would work. Uh, so so happy together in the neighborhood. Two comedies that are basically the same. <laughs> it's uh, so strange. Uh, the neighborhood is about a white family that moves into a, I guess, a black neighborhood. And it's kind of about gentrification, but they wouldn't, if this is a single cam, it would be about gentrification. Since it's a multi-cam, they, it's just a black neighbor hates his white neighbor. <laughs> um, it stars Cedric the Entertainer, Max Greenfield, Sean McKinney, uh, Marcel Spears, uh, T'China Arnold, and Beth Burrs, and Hank Greenspan. Now, you'll notice two of those names, are from the uh, are from two different shows, both canceled. Uh, one is from the mayor, and the other one is for I think Marcel Spears. They don't have their own Wikipedia pages, so I gotta look this up manually. I think Marcel Spears is he's from the mayor, and then Sean McKinney is from Great News. Now both of those shows were good, and then they were canceled, and now they're on these shows, <laughs> and uh, and you know I mean it's just a it's a wonderful. It's a wonderful cast of people, and now they have to, now they have to, you know, just deal with being on a very mediocre show. But I think, and I want to double check. So moving, and I also want to go. I want to move on to uh, Happy Together really quick. Uh, Happy Together is, you know, I don't. Oh, it's about a couple, a, uh, a couple that 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 they're not adopting a pop star, but a pop star comes to live with them. A British pop star, much akin to like a Harry Styles. Like that's, that's the kind of pop star adjusting the mic again while this is live. (laughs) That's, that's pretty much, that's who it is. Uh, Mary Holland was in the pilot. Good for her. Oh, and James Corden was in the, what did he produce the show? I feel like James Corden produced this show for some reason. No, he didn't. Anyway. uh, So that's what it is. So that's Damon Wayans Jr. Amber Stevens West, Steph West, Stephanie Weir, uh, Victor Williams, who is from uh, King of Queens, Chris Parnell, and F- I don't know who Felix Millard is. Let's look this guy up. Uh, ben Kirk. Oh, that's is his stage name Felix Millard? What? Why did it lead over here? Uh, oh, he's just some British guy. Oh, he's a fictional character from the show Neighbors. Oh, he doesn't have his own Wikipedia page. Okay, so anyway, uh, but yeah, so so look, so listen, to this we have we have about ten actors who are the uh, who are just these. Who, I don't understand. I don't know. It's it's really it's killing me. 
It's really killing me how they're on these shows. I also wanted to double check. Uh, James Burroughs, he usually has a hand in all of these, these, <laughs> Jesus, in all of these shows, but uh, in these multicams, but he doesn't have a hand in, in Happy Together. But there's not really much to say because, you know, like I said, I got Hulu for li- with live TV and I got a chance to check out these shows this week uh, when they were airing live, brand new episode. And I just, and it's, and it's just like any recent Multicam. It's it's a show that's that has uh, easy jokes, the, with that with piped in laughs, that uh, the actors they're doing their best with. And there was one joke that uh, they were. I think this is like the third episode. I want to I want to I want to make this clear, just in case. <laughs> Let's work it out. Is what it's called. The the third episode of this of Happy Together. Um. Uh, so Damon Wayans Jr.'s character is married to Amber Stevens West character, and they've basically gotten to a, I guess, an easy funk, and this is what the pop star is there to help him out. I don't know, and he's also hiding out their house. I don't know. I don't know the story. I don't know the story. I only watched about ten minutes of the show, so uh, they're they're in there, they're in the pantry, and they're getting rid of all the uh, of all this the junk food they have because the pop star is trying to put get them back in shape. And they turn to like these trash bins, giant trash bins for some reason. And Damien Wayans Jr. is pouring out like cereals and he has different puns for every cereal. And they're just the most thought over puns, like the most overbaked, easy puns. And it just sucks so much. The jokes, the jokes, they come, they come flying, but they're also, they're also, uh, it's like playing wiffle ball. <laughs> it's like a kid playing wiffle ball. A child wiffle ball game. The ball is sitting. Am I thinking of the right game? <laughs> am I thinking of the right game? Is wiffle ball the thing where the balls are sitting on a pedestal type dealy, and then they get a little smack? The kids smack them, and sometimes they go far, and not often they don't. They don't go far, and the ball just bounces and rolls. But that's how Happy Together and the Neighborhood on CBS feel. And this is the part that I'm cutting out for the Instagram. <laughs> That's why I said the names of the shows again. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but it's so, it's, it's so, it's not, it's, it's complicated in that they, I understand that uh, these multicams, they take time, but they're also easy to shoot. But, you know, uh, these, these actors are lucky to get these jobs. Uh, I don't understand why CBS continues to make something so easy. Uh, Man with a Plan is still going on, apparently. Uh, Kevin James's show is not. I wonder what kind of ratings that show got versus, well, they killed off a, a very capable actress for Leah Remini, who I have no issues with, but I'm not, it's just sad that they had to kill somebody off for it. They didn't have to. They could have brought her in and then... Um, uh, made James cheat with Aaron Hayes. I mean, cheat with Lee Remini on Aaron Hayes. Aaron Hayes gets mad. They get a divorce. They fight. Bring her back. You know, that's like the contemptuous wife. Contemptuous. Am I using these words right? <laughs> Listen, guys. It's been a long week, and it's only Wednesday. But it just—it's difficult to watch these shows. And to see, but you know what? I was really surprised when I saw Victor Williams. I, I thought, oh my gosh, Victor Williams, amazing, is in a TV show again. Speaking of Kevin James, he was in uh, King Queens. Victor Williams, Chris Parnell's in this show. I wonder if this interferes with uh, his uh, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the the show on Freeform, Grownish. Jesus, you know that show was called College College Ish. As for the neighborhood, I could tell from the, I didn't know Happy Together existed, but the neighborhood, it was recasted. So we knew what was coming. We kept seeing, they had to reshoot the pilot, all these different parts of the pilot. I wonder if they reused parts of the pilot, but, uh, you know, Beth Burr is bringing in Brett, Beth Burr's and, uh, Max Greenfield. I love, I like them both. Uh, I, I don't even know Beth. <laughs> I love Max. <laughs> I like Beth. Uh, the ratings, the ratings seem to have dipped in the since the pilot, going down from six from eight ten to uh, six point four three. So that's interesting to see. I oh boy, happy together started at five nine five and is down at four point six eight for this past week, which is not good, <laughs> not good at all. 
but I want to see everybody work. And that's the issue. I want to see everybody have a job. I really do. And I just hope that this is somehow better for them. Hey, listen, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break. I got nothing to talk about during the break. So stick with it. And we'll see you in the next half of whatever this show is. The Constitutionals. Okay. All right. Here we go. And we're back. Oh, my gosh. Did you miss me during the break? I'm just adjusting myself. Not if you're listening to audio version, I wasn't adjusting my genitals. I was adjusting the seating position on the futon. You should definitely check out the video version of this show because it was not dirty in the slightest. So uh, let's get let's get into the thing I want to talk about, which apparently I want to talk about last week, but I didn't uh, or it oh, it happened. It happened the next day. So everybody is starting their own streaming service, which is a very serious problem. It's you don't the the reason when uh, so 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 streaming became big when people realized they could get everything they wanted on Netflix. Well, about 40 percent of what they wanted on Netflix. That 40 percent turned into the 100 percent when they realized they don't want to continually watch reality shows or see uh, reruns of um, I don't know. Uh, Jesus, Chad, think of a show reruns. They don't want to see reruns on it on television, like of old comedies and stuff like that. Uh, and then, and then, you know, there was a, I think there was a golden age for streaming, which was about three years ago when streaming numbers were going up when it's like two, two, three years ago when streaming numbers were just exploding, people were flocking to Netflix because it was, you pay, and this is when Netflix was $10 a month. You pay $10 a month and you get to watch so many shows. Plus Netflix is just starting to make their own shows. They're promising to put out 500 hours of their original shows, uh, original stuff at the, by the end of the year. And it's great. And we don't have to have cable anymore. And now we're at this plateau, which basically happened last year, where you have shows leaving Netflix and going to Hulu because they can make more money uh, getting ad support, you know, over time versus getting a lump sum from uh, from Netflix. Uh, you have Disney wanting to make their own streaming service and uh, wanting to take everything except for the Marvel created Disney shows that are on Netflix, like created specifically for Netflix, <laughs> just leaving them on there. Uh, you got broadcast networks making their own streaming services. You have cable networks making add ons to streaming services like FX plus which is you get ad free five dollars. You pay five dollars on top of your cable fee on top of your streaming thing to get to get, you know, uh, ad freak stuff from them. Oh, my God. It's just so much. So, so, so much. But you can't you can't get FX plus without subscribing to cable or to streaming. So you either subscribe to Hulu and get FX plus or you subscribe to uh, Charter Spectrum and get FX plus. So there's so many, so many people having their own streaming services. And now here we are. Warner Media is launching a direct to consumer streaming service in the fourth quarter of 2019. Fourth quarter is basically next year around this time. Uh, John Stanky Stanky announced the company is going to com- to do the same thing that Disney's doing uh, by the end of 19, 2019. Much like how DC Comics is doing, which is also owned by Warner. Side note, I was talking to somebody. Actually, no. <laughs> this part, this part's not true. I wasn't talking to them about it. I, I mean, we weren't discussing it. I was talking to them about it, and they did not give a crap, uh, as evidenced by them not responding to my message. But I was talking to somebody about how Warner, when uh, AT and T re- acquired Time Warner, they changed the name to Warner Media, and I thought that was the craziest thing in the world. <laughs> and that person did not agree. <laughs> I'm such a boring, I'm such a boring boy. So Stanky said, uh, Warner Media would launch a streaming service that would draw from the media's broad, the media company's broad collection of films, television shows, animation, and its library, which is basically all the stuff I just said. This new uh, OTT offering would augment the company's other streaming services like HBO Now. I think it's, uh, so basically what they're saying is they're going to, make their own streaming service. It's going to be something that can, uh, that can compete with, it's not, it's not fighting to replace Netflix. 
uh, they're they're just going to they're going to it's going to be a, an add on service, something that you could it's complimentary, you know. Uh, and here's a here's a quote from them. Uh, Stanky said, "The combined offer will not look like anything out there. Our job isn't to build another Netflix. Our job is to build a compelling content offering." So basically, he knows he can't compete. They know they can't compete, but they're going to get right in there and they're going to continue doing whatever it is they do over there. So, so we have two ends of the spectrum for Warner who already, that already had the, the company that already has a streaming network. They have or two streaming services, HBO now, which is $15 for this, the, the premium tier of, of their shows. Like that's the most premium thing they own. And then they have, DC's streaming service, which is DC Universe, which you can, I think, only get on your laptop, on your computers, and on your phones and tablets, and that's nine dollars a month, and that's mostly, and that's a very niche thing. And I'm going to wager as much, you know, HBO. You can get HBO Go, right, or now. You can get now. No, Go is for cable. You can get HBO now via Amazon channels. And it's still the same fifteen dollars a month, but you can you can you just go to Amazon and watch your HBO stuff there. I can I can I, I can wager as much to say I can wager I'd wager that DC Universe will somehow some at some point be put on Amazon channels, just as a way uh, for people to watch it. Because you know I'm I have a I have a PlayStation, I have an Xbox, I have a Nintendo Switch. Uh, they all have their apps and stuff. That's the only way I'm going to watch stuff on it. I don't watch stuff on my phone. And there's plenty of people like me. I don't watch stuff on my phone. I don't watch stuff on my laptop. I don't watch stuff on my uh, old, decrepit iPad. Because <laughs> I prefer the television. Because I'm not an imbecile. <laughs> I'm not a moron. But it makes... It simultaneously makes sense why they're doing this. But it also... Because uh, it's, it's just... It's, it's also... Let me finish that thought. Simultaneously makes sense to do this, but it doesn't. It, what if it doesn't work out? Because there are plenty of streaming services that have died, see so, that didn't work out, see so. Uh, <laughs> uh, and a lot of them that just aren't doing well. CBS All Access, that's doing great because it's, I mean, not only is it the highest, the highest rated broadcast network in the world, uh, but. You know, there, I think there's two tiers for it. I think there's like an ad supported version that's like five dollars, and then I think there's another version that's nine dollars, and you get almost all the shows that were on CBS stuff that you can't stream anywhere else. Uh, yeah, and obviously, uh, they're going to they're going to block they're going to block. Uh, Warner's not going to have you know stuff uh, that's already able to stream on other networks. Not going to have that streaming anymore. And that's what that's what sucks about this. And you know, this separating all these different shows and movies and stuff, I don't I don't think that's great because I used to watch every single year starting around this time, I used to watch Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, like like an episode an episode or two every Saturday morning to treat like a Saturday morning cartoon. And then I would end around March. March or April, something like that, May sometimes. Sometimes May. And now, and then they took those off of this of Netflix. Uh, the I'm sorry, they let the contract expire. That's how they, that's how that happens. Uh, and and I and now it's on the streaming service. But I'm not paying nine dollars to watch DC Universe. You know, no offense to them. You know, when all of Titans is is out, I'll I'll do the uh, and they ha- and they have a free trial. I will subscribe for, during the free trial. I'll watch all of Titans, and then I won't ever. Subscribe to DC Universe again, because if I wanted to read a comic book, I'd just go read a comic book. I'm not gonna. They have all that different stuff. It's it's it, we we just live in a different time now. Like imagine if all of these, if if we had the technology back in the 90s when cable was big, when cable was huge in its prime, and we were and we were talking about splintering all these different services. Okay, you get the Disney Channel, and you get. Uh, Toon Disney. This is like 2005. You get Toon Disney, and you get the Disney Music Channel, Radio Disney, and you get all for fourteen dollars. 
and we would have no choice but to pay it. <laughs> and then somehow they mess with your cable box and then it just opens up the 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 pathway for it. It's very strange. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But you know what? We got to keep going through with it. All right, I'm done. Uh, hey, if you like this, why don't you head on over to cpluscomedy.com where there's some stuff going on. I got a couple of interviews. Uh, actually, if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can check out, stay subscribed to this RSS feed. Don't unsubscribe. Please don't. This is not the last episode. You uh, Tomorrow you will get a very special interview I did with Ryan Singer. He's a comedian. He has a new album out called Free Love. And uh, quite frankly, I'm going to put up his, epi- his, uh, his interview because it is a very long interview that I did. It's only like 20-something minutes. So listen to it. <laughs> it's a good interview. I think I did a good job asking questions. You can also head on over to, uh, you know, and I, and I did a Brian Babylon interview too. Brian Babylon, great comic. Good guy. He's a panelist on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and that is one of the main reasons I want to talk to him. Really funny man. Uh, definitely check out his album and check out the interview I did with him. And uh, check out the application. Like I said, I'm just begging WABE for a job. And listen, any if anybody from WABE is subscribed, <laughs> I, su- I suspect at least zero of you are. <laughs> why, why don't you? Why don't you uh, hire me? Because I will. I and I, I'm. I'm just gonna let you right know right now. I will continue doing the news times and the constitutionals. <laughs> I'm so tired. I gotta stop talking. Speaking of news time, uh, that is a weekly entertainment news show that I do. Definitely check that one out. It's a good show. It's a good show. That's like what a parent says about their bad child. He's a good kid. <laughs> It's a good show. Definitely check it out. I like it a lot. Um, And (laughs) this week's episode is about Annapurna Pictures, how it's struggling to make money, uh, even though it has some of the most award-winning films like uh, Phantom Thread and Detroit, you know, some of the most important films of the past few years, and yet it's still not making money. So definitely check it out. It's this good episode. And spe- specifically, I love the cold open. Uh, I, I, it's a cold open where uh, I play Colin Powell in a Colin Powell biopic, and it's, a, it's in a trailer format, and it's super serious, and I love it and so much. So definitely check it out. Subscribe to us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, at Seatless Comedy, both at Seatless Comedy. Follow me on Twitter, at Chad Black White. Uh, like us on Facebook and continue doing the best thing you can do. I'm done here. I'm hanging up now. I love you so much. Bye.